up? Tales of Macaque Podcast, episode 16. I'm sitting here in the backyard waiting for my guest today, Matt Salinas. I'm not waiting in the sense that like he's late. We just didn't really set up a time and I'm kind of eager to get started, so here I am. Matt Salinas is a guy that I met at uh, 10 Plant Jiu-Jitsu. I signed up there a couple months ago when I moved back to Costa Mesa. He teaches classes there. I took a great class with him today in uh, Irvine at Team Oyama, 10th Planet of Irvine. And that gym is just so cool, man. Like, it's so cool. Uh, uh, that's like uh, the newest 10th Planet gym that I'm aware of. They uh, came up, they merged with uh, Team Oyama, which is a long existing MMA gym here in Orange County. A gym that, under different ownership, I trained at in high school. Our, uh, our wrestling team held practice sometimes with Team Oyama back when they were at a gym called No Limits, two blocks from the current location. And it's really cool going there because, um, there's some top UFC fighters there, right? Like Carlos Sparza trains there. Ian McCall's been there for years. It's just really cool seeing them there. I took a great class today with Matt Salinas, 10th Planet Brown Belt, excellent coach, beautiful young man. I don't know. I don't know what to talk about while he's waiting or while I'm waiting. I feel like my words aren't so good. I fucked up like six words right there. Oh well, there's time. Guys. Something that's been bothering me. I brought this up on previous podcasts. People claim there's no good movies left in the world. I know that is completely false. I have, I've seen the other side. That is completely ridiculous. If you feel that there's only remakes and sequels in Hollywood, you have a fair point. But there's also other movies. Two of them are in theaters right now. Amazing movies. Swiss Army Man. Captain Fantastic. I saw Captain Fantastic last night and stayed up all night due to the excitement. Captain Fantastic's a great movie. It's not a superhero movie like it sounds like. Captain Fantastic's a movie about Viggo Mortensen raising, um, I don't know how many kids he has, like six or seven kids in the mountains where he takes them on like a crazy regimen. They work out, they run. Um, He has them doing like burpees in the woods. (laughs) He has them climbing a a super dangerous rocks like rock climbing like a face of a mountain and then his wife dies that's like how the movie starts it's just how does he uh adapt from there and it's just amazing like the kids are so smart they're reading books they're um you know an eight-year-old knows the bill of rights inside and out it's just so cool and the other movie is um swiss army man which is like one of the silliest like most original movies of all time swiss army man is paul dano who's an actor that, uh, you know, if you don't know his name, you probably recognize his face. He's been in a lot of good movies. He was in uh, Little Miss Sunshine. It was the first time I saw him. He was in uh, There Will Be Blood. He's like the creepy Christian dude. And so anyway, in Swiss Army Man, Paul Dano, he's uh, stranded on an island. <laughs> he's about to kill himself, and he sees a body wash up on shore. It's the body of Daniel Radcliffe. <laughs> and... He goes up and he's so excited. He's, he's clearly been alone for a long time. They don't really say why or how he's stranded on this island, but he's there. And he gets so excited by the, the prospect of another person. And then Daniel Radcliffe just starts farting. And somehow it makes sense that to Paul Dano to climb on top of him and ride him like a jet ski as Daniel Radcliffe farts their way out into the sea. This is like the first three minutes of the movie. I'm not giving away too much. And it's just like silliness from there like it's just so silly it's a very surreal movie you don't you know, I, you watch the whole movie you don't really know what's real and what's not but it's just so good my point being guys that there's so many fucking good movies and I feel for you if you live in a place where they're not being shown you know I remember in Taiwan I, I was living there a year and a half and I didn't see that many movies because the big English theaters they only got the biggest movies right which was sequels, Transformers movies, Marvel movies. Um, I was talking to my buddy yesterday about it. I think he's saying that Star Wars is on that path. You know, there's a new Star Wars movie last year for the first time in years, but there's a new one coming out this year and presumably every year after. That's just the the way Hollywood's moving, which is unfortunate, but I, someone's enjoying it, clearly. I don't know who these people are, but... It, there's enjoyment to be had in seeing a sequel and knowing the characters and you know there's a comfort in that less podcasts are talking to care about it America is huge on comfort you know they want to know what they're getting into 
And so sitcoms and sequels play into that market, play into that mindset. I want no part of that, and I know a lot of you don't either. So I do feel for you if you don't have the opportunity to go see these sick movies that I keep talking about, Swiss Army Man in particular, Captain Fantastic is amazing. I don't know how widely distributed these are. You know, I'm in a very fortunate position to where I can go down to the UCI movie theater and just catch all these amazing independent movies that are coming out. And I don't know, like, I don't know how movie distribution works. I don't know if an independent movie will, can get to a big theater. I don't know if it's like necessary roadblocks. I don't know. I don't know anything. But the internet exists. The internet is your best friend, guys. If you don't know how to torrent something, learn. If you don't know how to find a movie online, Google the name of the movie and click watch. <laughs> or type in the word watch, rather. And then, you know, Putt Locker is a good one, uh, Project Free TV. There's many, many ways to watch good movies. Do not be limited by the sequels that are in the local cinema, if that's what you're limited to. If you're lucky like me, you live in Southern California, maybe you live you know, elsewhere in America, there should be a good independent theater nearby. I don't know. Can't say for sure. But if not, don't let it stop you. I've been watching good comedy lately. I've been watching a lot of Mike Brabiglia, one of the funniest guys that I know of. He has a great movie called Sleepwalk With Me. It does a great job of detailing the life of a struggling comedian. It's, it's semi-autobiographical in the sense that Mike Birbiglia really does experience um, sleepwalking. Like, <laughs> I, was, I was listening to an interview with him with Mark Marin on the WTF podcast, a great podcast. Um, I imagine most people have heard of it by now. I don't know how big it is. It's hard to tell. It's a great podcast. If you haven't heard of it, WTF with Mark Marin. It's tremendous. He gets a lot of comedians on there. I love it. And they're talking about, like, the comedians that Mike Birbiglia came up with. It was, like, Hedberg and I don't know who else. But just a bunch of drug guys. Those are his guys. He's, he's hanging out with a bunch of drug guys. But Mike Birbiglia doesn't do any. And so Mark Maron raises the point. He's like, so what happened, man? How would you get out so clean? Like, you don't do, do anything? He's like, well, I sleepwalk. And one time I ran through a window. So I think that's enough, man. I don't need, like... <laughs> I don't need more problems. I don't need a drug habit on top of that. And so in the movie Sleepwalk With Me, it's about that process and becoming a comedian and doing away with relationships. <laughs> and then he has a new movie coming out called Don't Think Twice, which details the um, improv comedy scene and the big moment when some people in the group are about to get really famous you know, on the, uh, onto a fictional Saturday Night Live style show. It's a very interesting process, very interesting movie, very interesting guy. I don't know. I'm just kind of rambling, eager for Matt to show up. I wonder if he is. Would that be possible if, like, it's very possible he just doesn't. <laughs> he just saw me at the gym and was like, yeah, for sure, man, for sure. I'm coming over. Just got to go meet my chick. Got to go get some food. I'm coming over, man. That's not really what he talks like, but those were his words. I don't know this point in time I can't say for sure it's one of those things one of those many moments in life where two minutes from now I'll have the answer but at this moment I don't oh well yeah I just messaged him on Facebook not the most convenient way of communicating not the most oh what else is going on anything else going on in the world I don't know I got a book from Matt today this is a book that I've been reading that I really love it's called Ego is the Enemy by Ryan Holiday, the author of The Obstacle is the Way. That's his other book. This is a Stoic philosophy book. Stoic philosophy is something I've been getting really into. Um, I, I've talked on the podcast before about my morning routine, and it's very important to me. And the best part of it now that I've been doing for a couple months, li with some breaks, as, as habits, ha as happens to habits when they're newly formed, uh, they get broken pretty easily. But I've been pretty steady about it, is I'll wake up, I'll do yoga, I'll meditate for 20 minutes, not always a full 20, today was 14, and then after that, I read a passage from a Stoic book, and I write a whole page about it. So today, the book was Meditations by Marcus Aurelius. This is considered to be the granddaddy of all Stoic philosophy books. And to some people, the granddaddy of all 
philosophy in general because it's written very plainly, very clearly, very well. So I'm going to pause this and come back with the meditations and read a passage. All right, so this is the passage for today. It's quite a long one. Not all of them are this long. Um, and I've heard different things about what this book actually is, whether it's Marcus Aurelius's personal notebook or um, his book to be given to the next emperor. Because Marcus Aurelius is a historical figure. He's a real guy. He was the emperor of Rome. I, I guess a good one. I mean, he is a huge statue in Rome. He was immortalized in that movie Gladiator. He's the old guy at the beginning who dies. And so this was the passage today. It's quite long. Since it is possible that you might depart from life this very moment, regulate every act and thought accordingly. But to go away from among men, if there are gods, is not a thing to be afraid of, for the gods will not involve you in evil. But if indeed they do not exist, or if they have no concern about human affairs, why would I wish to live in a universe devoid of gods or devoid of providence? But in truth, they do exist, and they do care for human things, and they have put all the means in man's power to enable him not to fall into real evils. And as to the rest, if there were anything evil, they would have provided that it should be altogether in a man's power not to fall into it. Now that which does not make a man worse, how can it make a man's life worse? But neither through ignorance nor having the knowledge, but not the power to guard against it or correct these things, is it possible that the nature of the universe has overlooked them? Nor is it possible that it has made so great mistake, either through want of power or skill, that good and evil should happen indiscriminately to the good and the bad. But death and life, honor and dishonor, pain and pleasure, all these things equally happen to good men and bad, being things which make us neither better nor worse. Therefore, they are neither good nor evil. It's a lot to take in. Yeah, because there's a big thing in Stoicism about not being afraid to die. This is a big thing in Zen Buddhism as well. There's a lot of parallels between Stoicism and Zen Buddhism. Not being afraid to die is huge. And his, his point there that I think he's making is if there's God, if there is a god, he 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 refers to it as plural, because um, there's many Roman gods. Um, but I think in this country, if you do believe in God, is is one, you know. Um, so if there is such a god, then that's great. If you lived a good life, you'd be fine. And if there's not, you lived a good life and you're fine. And so the point is, is like no matter which way it goes, like whether there is a god, whether there is not, whether there are many gods, whether there's one, whether there's thousands, it doesn't really matter. Live well, live fine, and you'll be all right. I think that's a good message. I'm going to turn this off and wait for Matt. Matt Salinas, how's it going, my friend? It's going. How you doing? I'm doing terrible, man. Uh, Fucking terrible. Woke up today, learned some jujitsu from you, got beat up by these savages. The fuck are you doing to me, man? Uh, well, What's your point? I don't know. I'm trying to, I, I tell people I want to make them better at life, but you know, I just really just want to see them in pain. <laughs> so, good man. Man, I'm really enjoying your classes lately. A lot of good passing. A lot of good stuff. You're saying some good shit. You have some good sayings. What'd you say today that I liked? I don't know. I forgot. Um, live, love, laugh. Yeah, that might have been it. <laughs> I remember that one. I went through like a, uh, a time in my life where um, I would go, in, whenever I would go into someone's house, and I grew up in Orange County uh, for the most part, and so when I would go into someone's house, I'd always see like live, love, laugh. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> pictures and stuff. So every time I would see one, I would take a picture of it and so in my one of my old iPhones I have a uh, just a collection of just random live love laugh photos well you can have a good time here man we don't have live love laugh but we have some uh, some pretty happy things on the wall yeah. in this house yeah they're important mom, I, you know my I, mom's into good quotes they're they're <laughs> important you know I, I I like to make fun of it but really you know things like that um, they uplift the soul yeah I feel and that's it, important man. 
Yeah. Uh, speaking of quotes, man, before on the intro, I was reading a little bit of Marcus Aurelius's Meditations. Oh, man. Are you familiar with this, sir? I'm not, no. Some stoic philosophy. Nice. It's cool, man. You see that movie Gladiator? Dude, it's one of my all-time favorite movies. Like, uh, Russell Crowe will forever be... He's, he goes down as one of the greats for that role alone. Yeah, so Marcus Aurelius was the emperor at the beginning of the movie. Right. I'm loyal to the one true emperor, Marcus Aurelius. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is his book. Yep. It's a real dude. Emperor of Rome. The quote in the beginning was about how we should not fear death because if God is just, then death is cool. And if there is no God, then what's the point? Don't fear it. Embrace. Yeah, might as well, right? Embrace. Might as well. So I wrote out a thousand questions for you, man. Mm. I went a little bit wild. It's okay. Wild, I think if we, get, a, if we have, get any of these done. Or two. Have so, you? No. No? It's one of the jokes I like to say during class. Like, I'll just say something that pertains to having an ex-wife, and people think that I'm serious. Yeah, I, I thought you were serious. The jokes get kind of this. dark, <laughs> but that's what's funny to me. Okay. <laughs> No, no, me and my buddy, there's, there's this quote from our favorite show is Arrested Development, mm. where there's this actor, and he just, <laughs> he just keeps saying, I want my kids back. Just like in op- inopportune situations. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, so you're training for a competition? Like, no, I just want my kids back. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, see? Yeah, that's what I find funny. I think um, that's with uh, Tobias, right? Uh, Tobias doesn't say that. It's um, but that's the same show. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, yeah. yeah. One that's of my favorite uh, YouTube videos is, uh, or YouTube clips rather, is um, uh, Tobias Sadwalk. Have you seen that? <laughs> so many times. <laughs> I mean, I've seen it in the show so many times. Yeah. Just, oh. <laughs> this one's about hard-boiled eggs. Just look up Tob- Tobias Sadwalk, and it'll it'll be a good later laugh. All you yeah. listeners. Or just watch Rest of Development. That is a, lot, oh, that is a yeah, comedy yeah. out there. There's a lot of comedy to be had. Thank you for the tea, sir. Yeah, for sure, man. Drink up some green tea. It's the last of my batch. About to order some tea. I hustled all my friends into giving me money to order some tea for them. Because mm-hmm. I'm the only guy I know who has a tea guy. Yeah. I have a tea guy in Taiwan. That once he gets back there, I just send him money. He sends me some tea. Oh, you have a tea guy. I have a tea guy, yeah. Mm. I have a white guy with a Chinese wife. Mm. And he just sends me some tea. So I wrote down so many questions. I don't even know where mm-hmm. to start, man. You don't have an ex-wife. That's half my questions. Oh, uh, well. <laughs> yep. You have a sense of humor that kills the podcast. <laughs> it's supposed to be, you're supposed to be the straight guy and the funny guy. Uh-oh. I brought you in here. It's really, um, this podcast is all about my ego. <laughs> and I really just like, <laughs> need you to build me. If you could compliment me a lot. Okay. If you, could. <laughs> you got a great bone structure, dude. Yeah. Yeah, the gray that's coming in, <laughs> is, uh, it, you know, like when people see that, it's like, oh, this guy, he's been through it. You know, mm-hmm. he's got some wisdom. It's true. Yep. I do read Marcus Aurelius books. Yep. <laughs> Drink tea, uh, read Marcus Aurelius books. Got a podcast. This guy probably's got some shit to say. <laughs> Supposedly, I keep thinking like if I do enough podcasts, I'll say something important, but I can't <laughs> say for sure it's happened yet. He's like, I don't know. I don't listen to these podcasts. I'm usually stoned. This is on the first podcast where I just don't have any weed. Uh-huh. I feel like I'm a bad host. I should at least offer some. Uh, but today's not the day. Today's not the day. I, I, I probably wouldn't. I got to teach out you know, later tonight, and I don't like to, to smoke beforehand. I, I like to give people my 100. That's good. And then at the end of the day, that's usually when I uh, do my partaking in the marijuana Good call, good call. That's why we're a good team, man, because you go to class not high, I come to class high, yeah. and then you teach me. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't, I, mean, I don't mind if people, you know, show up stoned or whatever, but if you come, it, it, be, it becomes an issue, and I, and I have to have this conversation with people sometimes. Like, it becomes an issue where if people show up, you know, too stoned, and I'm and I am asking them to do something, and they just have, like, too much of a delay, and I tell them to move their left foot, mm-hmm. they end up moving the right hand. I'm like, all right, cut it out, bitch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're wasting my time. I came close. Um, this last Sunday was uh, the Dream Tournament. I was competing there. And I came very close to having my first tournament in a while, not mm-hmm. high. And mm-hmm. then I told that to one of, our, one of our students. I won't name him. I don't know if he wants this out there. But you know him. He's one of the guys. And I just told him that. I was like, hey, man, this is my first tournament. I've been done stone. He's like, oh, bro. And opens up his hand. And he's got five gummies, 300 milligrams in his hand. <sighs> Chris. <laughs> <laughs> maybe, maybe not. <laughs> may or may not be Chris. But it's just funny like how quick. He's like, oh, bro, dude. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he's a good dude. Hawaiian Chris. All right, what's up with these questions? All right. Is it true you sleep in a car? Um... 
who, where are you getting your goddamn information from? From you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, totally. Um, I do do that. How long have you been doing that for? Um, let's see. Hmm. I started trimming all the fat from my life. Uh, it's been about maybe like going on, maybe like a little over two years, coming on three years now. Cool. Um, yeah, I mean, I have a home, but that's like out in the desertish area. Where at? In uh, like out towards Temecula, Mur- Murrieta area. Oh, I see. Yeah. Not so, very close to where you're teaching. Correct. Yeah. So everything that I do is in, in Orange County. Um, so what I do is like I, I keep the ba- I have a hatchback, a little tiny car, um, but it's it's well made, it's designed well. So I keep a bed back there. And what I'll do is um, I'll uh, I'll teach, you know, morning and night, and then if I have to teach again the next day at like 7 a.m. Mm-hmm. and I don't want to drive home, it takes me like an hour without traffic. Right. Um, then I'll just you know go crash my car. I, I'll usually go actually not too far from here, not too far from your house. I'll just like hang out by the beach, wake up in the morning, do my thing in the sand. And then go teach, and then you know just repeat. That's cool, man. Yeah, I really like that. I've romanticized that lifestyle for myself. Yeah, I, I came very close to living in a car, and I just couldn't figure it out. Like with my car, I don't have a hatchback. I like yeah. <laughs> it would have to be like I would put down the back seats yeah. and then crawl in like a coffin into the trunk. <laughs> in the you know, trunk? That's the yeah, only way yeah. I could like uh, think about it. Like, it's a sedan. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah, dude, I've seen it. You got to get those windows tinted too. Yeah, cool. yeah. I wasn't prepared for it at all, mm-hmm. so I just moved into this house in yeah. Costa Mesa. <laughs> yeah. But I think that's cool, man. I, I keep reading a lot about guys who have done that. A lot of comedians do that. Mm-hmm. Doug Stanhope did it for three years. Yeah, uh, it's more common than you think. Like once you like start considering the idea of doing that, you'll start looking around, like as you're driving, mm-hmm. and you'll see vehicles and where people obviously sleep in them. Right. You know, like people will park like in random business you know lots or like a 24-hour fitness parking lot or a walmart parking lot you know you'll just start look you know, noticing vans and things like that there's a dude sleeping in the buena park parking lot on monday yeah 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 it was, was kind of weird that his door was open like <laughs> <laughs> you know? but, i didn't want to be seeing him but yeah. he's there uh-huh. he's doing his, his stuff mm-hmm. and there's a guy in um have you ever been up to 10th planet whittier the, the youth center no so they, they have a cool yoga program they do up there mm-hmm. and so i went up there and that's a van guy as well Oh, yeah, 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 um, Anthony. Yeah. Yeah. Real cool guy. Yeah, I, r- I really like that guy. I like him a lot. Uh, Shout out Yoga Lockdown Podcast. Yoga Lockdown. <laughs> yeah, that guy's good, good vibes. Um, no, he's got a sick setup. He's got a yeah. sick fan. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's like the, right. yeah, that's the ultimate goal, um, is to get something like that. Um, yeah. So, so, <laughs> so living in a car, I think that's cool, man. I think mm. it's romantic. I, I like it. I like it. Yeah. Um, what about a girl? You ever bring a girl in the car? How's that work? Dude, that's so funny. Like, <laughs> <laughs> As you were saying that, I was thinking something along those lines about females. Um, yeah, dude, I, I have. Um, it takes a very special type of girl. <laughs> <laughs> she has to like you already a lot. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, I have... Um, I, I have done that. Was this the issue that drove you apart from your ex-wife? <laughs> <laughs> it's funny, you know. Life. You know, I, I, I've, um, I've actually like, li- we lived in in a warehouse before. Like really? it was like kind of like a fighters den. Um, you know, like classic fight team. Cool. You know their gym. Um, I mean, it's right by Ten Point right Coast, Coast Mesa. Mesa right? Yeah, that yeah. used to be. I've never been in there. That used to be the Nawaza warehouse. Mm. And then we just we would have like um, guys from our team and visitors come there and stay in there. Like we built an upstairs. It was like a total makeshift second story. <laughs> we put in rooms. There was like four rooms total, I think, five rooms. Um, and so there was like a few of us just like living in there. And I thought it was gonna be something super temporary. Mm-hmm. And it ended up being for like a good two years. We did that, <laughs> dude. Yeah, yeah. So. So that was pre-car. Uh, yeah, pretty much. I, like, I, I would do like I, I've always had the bed in the back of my car, and okay. like I would uh, like I've had my own place. Like I've worked full time, pretty much. It, was, it wasn't only until this last 
like in February is when I stopped working full time, um, as well as teaching. Uh, I worked full time, and I had my own place and and all that. And then I started wanting to like trim down and you know on all my uh, all my bills and what I was paying. And just to me, it wasn't necessary to um, pay you know nine hundred bucks for a place and that I would only spend like six hours a day in because I'd that. go to work. And then I'd go teach and then train myself. And then, by t- you know, go eat. By the time I get home, I shower. Then I go to sleep. Then I repeat, you know. Mm-hmm. So it just it wasn't worth the money. And I would rather take that money that I was spending on, on um, living quarters and then put that towards uh, paying off the, you know, even the small amount of debt that I, you know, acquired for myself at such a young age. Um, and once I am completely, you know, debt free, which I'm almost, you know, out of it, wow. uh, then I'm gonna go and get that badass band like Yoga Lockdown. What's <laughs> up? <laughs> yeah, being debt free—that's almost like um, like seeing a unicorn or something. Yeah, yeah I know a guy. <laughs> yeah, 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 totally. What? He has no. What do you mean? <laughs> it's modern day modern day slavery. Yeah, I'm part of it, man. Yep, I'm locked in. I got a couple yep. thousand dollars of student loans. Yep, as it happens. You yeah, know. yeah, that's the way it goes. Yeah. So when you're lo- working full time, what was that job? Is it an office? Um, well, I started, I had a really, I had a really good job. It, had, it was a union job. I was working for, I was working in a warehouse for um, a company called Kroger. And basically, they're the company that owns like Rouse and, and Food Huge for Less company. and stuff. Yeah. Huge. So it was a union job, full benefits, everything mm-hmm. um, for your whole family as well as yourself. Um, plus, they pay you like way too much money. And I was like, re- <laughs> way too much money, man. Um, it was, it's like the kind of job where you can like afford to like buy yourself toys, mm-hmm. you know, like jet skis and all that kind of stuff, oh, you wow. know? So that's what I thought that I wanted when I, and I was working that full time. You're doing it for the jet skis? Yeah. Yeah. My, my, my mentality was a little bit different at that sure. you know, point in my life. And then being there, um, I just kind of looked around and I realized, you know, uh, I just had a change in perspective. And I wasn't able to train martial arts as much as I uh, was before. I, I started training um, when I was in my teens. I think I was like 12. And then I just looked around and I, you know, knew that I could be ha- happier. So um, a job opportunity came up to work for a company called Budo Videos. Mm. Shout out to Budo Jake and Budo Dave. Love you guys. They put out some great stuff, man. Dude, yeah. If Old you guys, guys if you guys haven't been to budovideos.com, do yourself a favor, check that out. Um, great company. It's ran by martial artists. So it was taking a big pay cut. Yeah. Um, I sent it in my resume and stuff like that, and I ended up, you know, getting you know, getting the the job. Um, so it was a big decision. My parents were like super mad at me for quitting the job that I had. As they should be. Yeah. They're like, are you kidding me? Like, this is the job that, you know, there's like thousands of people, you know, waiting to have your job. Right. You know what I mean? You'll be set for life kind of kind of thing. You couldn't spin it like, yeah, I'm doing them a favor. I think someone needs it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Charitable. Yeah, so... And I'm sure, like, working in a warehouse, man, that, that's, like, a tiring job. Like, I used to work in a warehouse, yeah. and, like, after work, I did nothing. Dude, yeah, I worked in the freezer. Um, okay. So... Is that really, better or like, worse? Negative <laughs> degree temperatures, you know? <laughs> They're in a parka. It, it's, 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 it was tough work, man. Um, and my dad worked for the same company. He's, he's a driver. Um, and so he was especially mad. I remember... Because okay, yeah, he, helped, he helped get me... He helped get me in, and he had... Uh, sorry he had pulled a lot of strings and then so I remember man I'll never forget like looking in his face Mm. when I told him he's like his like his like lip was twitching Mm. his eye was his eye was twitching and he's just like (laughs) so mad and like let down and he's just like you know what are you doing because they didn't understand they 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 didn't now they kind of understand but at the time they didn't understand um really where martial arts can take someone right you know what i mean and how much that fulfills one yeah as someone who's never trained yeah it, it's not something you can really explain to anyone yeah. and like, how old were you at the time when you quit when i quit i was like 22 okay 
Yeah. Yeah. Um, Dad thought your life was over. Yeah, he's like, dude, you have a big opportunity. You're mm-hmm. so young. You know, you can buy your own house, pay off your own house, get your toys. Da, da, da. But those things didn't appeal to me. Comfort and security. Right. Like, it's like, you know, you spend so much time working, you're not going to have the time to enjoy all this stuff that you're acquiring. And really, you know, martial arts made me happy. And, and it's hard to explain to someone, you know, how much joy martial arts brings to you. It's not just mm-hmm. about learning chokes and joint locks. It's all the things in between, you know. It's instant friends, man. Yeah. I've been moving around the past couple of years, and I always think, like, I, I've put myself in a situation where I can never complain that I don't know anyone mm. in a city because mm. I just go to jiu-jitsu. Yeah. Problem solved. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Maybe it's not instant, like, friends for life, but maybe, you know. I don't know. You always have that common ground with someone. You can, yeah. you, can you know, vibe over that same thing. Yeah, it's instant friends. And that's a cool thing about nowadays, man, with the internet. Like, any country you're in, you can hit up and go do some Mm jujitsu. Any single country. Yeah. With 10th Planet, any major city you're in, Mm -hmm. you go to 10th Planet Gym in America. True that. If you're in a round of the world, it's BJJ Globetrotters, America, 10th Planet. It's the traveling (laughs) associations. Yeah, BJJ Globetrotters. They put on some pretty fun camps. Yeah? Um... But yeah, and then, like, you know, you're interacting with people that you normally would probably never interact with. Like, everyone from, you know, trash men to uh, doctors to lawyers to police officers and everything in between. Mm-hmm. You know, people who are unemployed, you know, but it doesn't matter. You know, the, the mats are the equalizer. Once you get in there, everyone's wearing, everyone looks the same. No one yeah. comes in with their business suit or their work outfit, you know. So you can connect with people on a on a more real level <laughs> there is one dude that comes to Costa Mesa in a mm-hmm. suit and mm-hmm. it's always funny he, he changes like uh, visibly mm-hmm. and he wears those spats that Mike mm-hmm. made where it's just like a weed leaf it's mm-hmm. just <laughs> 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 you obviously know what I'm talking yeah. about but if someone yeah, hasn't yeah. seen him it's literally just a close up picture of a beautiful nug put on pants yeah and yeah so yeah. this guy there's always a point where he has his dress shirt on mm. and these weed pants he yeah, yeah, just came from the office he's some sort of financial guy so funny I love i'm it. always so like taken back when i see people in their like regular clothes i'm like oh you mm-hmm. look like that <laughs> <laughs> you, you don't always wear board shorts and a rash guard you know yeah but yeah but anyhow um i uh took that big pay cut and i made a big jump and i started working for budo videos um and basically just uh, running their office for them. Hmm. Um, they have a few different things that they're into. Uh, they have, like, a whole bunch of, like, online web shows and podcasts they do, and, like, they they film a bunch of um, tournaments and stuff like that, like, live stream. But the side that I was um, in charge of was uh, their online retail site. So I would just do all their office work for them, um, which I probably normally would never do. Mm-hmm. Unless it was martial arts related. You know what I mean? That's an important distinction, yeah. yeah. And it was cool. There's mats there and everybody, you know, pretty much trained. So I get I got to like take calls and people would come in. I would just get to nerd out about martial arts all day. Mm. You know, and even though it was like more than more than half of my money, like pay cut wise, it was gone. Um and there's no benefits or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, all no that security, yeah, no comfort. All that stuff, you know, <laughs> all that stuff was gone, but way less, like, stress, and I had way more joy, mm. you know, throughout my days. You know, just little things, you know, being surrounded by people who enjoyed being there and being able to talk about the things we were passionate about. So it was, it was worth it to me. That's huge, man. Yeah. So I recently had an experience. I moved up to Orange County, actually, to get an accounting job. Anyone who listens to the podcast knows about this. It was a big ordeal in my life. Mm. It didn't last that long. But I know exactly what you're talking about, being in an office, like, not not being able to nerd out. I had the exact yeah. opposite experience. Like, I yeah. try to talk to people about it, and they're just kind of like, eh. You know, they heard about Conor McGregor, and that's about as far as it goes, martial arts knowledge. Mm. And it's, it, it's uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah, Connor. like, all my, all my creative passions that were going on, like, I, I try to write a lot, I do stand-up comedy, I do jiu-jitsu. All these things take place in the mind that, <laughs> take place in a part of the mind that is not helped by accounting. Correct. You know, yeah. and it's just very, it was very interesting for me to see, like, because I've heard of the mind being like a muscle, not in the sense that it grows bigger or anything like that, but that 
the more you use it, the better you get at using it. Correct, yeah. You know, and that's an absolutely true thing. I don't know the mechanism there. I also don't know the mechanism for muscles. <laughs> what do I know, man? <laughs> and it's just yeah. interesting to see, like, how much of an impact that has. Mm-hmm. And I, I keep um, having, like, the, the inclination that maybe I should go back. Like, I don't know if I just take an office job for a couple months mm-hmm. and then have money and then... So my, my big thing is that I want to fly back to Asia. Mm. I think I was over there for two years out of college. I'm just like, oh, that was a nice life. Yeah. Maybe I should just do that again. As opposed to being broke around here, which I'm enjoying, man. I kind of like being poor in Costa Mesa. Yeah. I really like it. It's a simple life. I've been training a lot more since then. Yeah, man. Um, now I'm, like, teaching full time. Um, You're teaching at, a lot, man. Yeah, I'm, I'm at a point where I didn't think I'd be able to sustain, you know, a living off of just you know teaching and doing all that i always thought like i would have to have a you know full-time job mm-hmm. um but since february i stopped working at budo and that was i worked at budo for like a few years super grateful for that opportunity you know but um ultimately i just wanted to do martial arts because it was still a job you know it was mm-hmm. still work now i get to come and teach you know my friends some some moves and some that dope I, shit some dope shit <laughs> and uh you know just bullshit and and you know share a little bit of um of uh knowledge and wisdom that i've acquired you know from coaches that i've had over the years and it's just and i get paid to do it it's, it's pretty cool but it didn't happen all right away you know i had to i had to grind i had to uh you know sleep in my in my car and and you know go buy a a whole uh, cooked chicken and mm. and greens and, and avocados and that was my 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 breakfast lunch and dinner for like three days straight and then you know yeah, it's you, a lot you, of you give up a, you give up a lot of luxuries you know what I mean mm-hmm. in in the pursuit of acquiring knowledge mm-hmm. but the the pursuit of that knowledge you know you know that eventually you can turn that over for a profit you know right you can make a living from martial arts and it took a long time for my parents to kind of understand that I was like look this is school you have to look at it as this is school for me you know I'm, I'm going and I'm learning things and eventually I'll be able to make a living from that and they're just like we don't we don't have faith in you <laughs> but as they should yeah, yeah, yeah they're, they're not supposed to just jump on board with that yeah I know they're parents totally, totally. <laughs> I know. no one over the age of 40 is Com- supposed to be like yeah you don't need money until this day man there's like wait you sleep in your car oh my god Matthew are you kidding me you know doesn't it get cold you know whatever Mm -hmm. you know do people you know come and try to rob you in your car how often do you get stabbed um (laughs) dude I keep a machete in my car yeah yeah I've got a few different uh sharp objects Cool. Plus these pythons, you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, you're ripped, man. I'm good. <laughs> I wouldn't mess with you. <laughs> <laughs> I would. I, I'm pretty. I don't. I don't think I look intimidating. <laughs> I try to smile a lot. Okay. And I don't try to. I, the, the whole tough guy thing is like weird to me. <laughs> you know. Yeah, I don't know many guys in jujitsu who keep up that tough guy sternness. Yeah. I know some guys like put it on. Yeah. But any time. <laughs> As soon as you catch them, they're just laughing and giggling. Yeah, it's 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 a it's a weird front. It's tiring, and you know I think as young men, you at least I did. Um, you know, you go through a phase where you're like that. I did go through that phase, you know, where you put on this this uh, this false image of mm-hmm. yourself and you try to be tougher than you are, and you know, kind of, of thing. But you grow out of it. It becomes tiring and taxing, you know, on your energy levels and soul. Your soul's like, hey, this isn't me. Mm-hmm. You know, so then you just kind of get a little bit lighter in the face and you smile a little bit more. Which brings us back to this book, Ego is the Enemy. Boom, Ryan Holiday, shout out. <laughs> this is a book for you, man. It's my gift to you. Really? Yeah, you're Thanks, going, dude. You're going on a trip. I think you need some philosophy. Thank you. It leads exactly into your last point, trying to be a tough guy when you're not. It's all ego. Why are you trying to impress these people at every stage of your journey? Ego is the enemy. Appreciate it. it. What are you trying to say about me, though? Just saying you have a hard road ahead, <laughs> man. <laughs> Don't let the ego come in the way. We've all got ego issues. Yeah, no exactly. How much it's not like a it. yeah. It's not like a personal attack, like I, in any way. Yeah. Which is kind of like an interesting thing, like because I'm into a bunch of stuff that if I tell someone about, like, yeah, 
think I fucking need that? <laughs> like, yeah, dude, everyone could eat more nutritiously. That's mm-hmm. like nothing. That's not an insult to anyone. Like, mm-hmm. hey, you should have some vegetables. Yeah. yeah? I think I fucking, yeah, you're a human. You should have, why, I should exercise? Yeah, you should exercise. Mm-hmm. You should do some yoga. Why? I need to be flexible for you? Like, no, you should <laughs> do it for yourself. I don't care. <laughs> you know, and all these things. Like, oh, I think I need to meditate. I think I'm angry. Like, I don't know. Are you? You see, yeah, now you are. <laughs> these are all things that we can do. Like, I was, you know, having uh, my buddy, he, I, I just got him training, and he's like a big weightlifter. He's, he was a guy who was in class earlier today. His name is Matt. Huge dude. Huge. He's Huge. Joked. He's jacked. And, and like, his veins popping out everywhere, and, you know, he, his mobility is not there because he's just so you know, yoked, you right. know? Um, and I was like, Matt, your new goal is to focus on flexibility and mobility. Mm-hmm. Uh, focus on that every, every single day when you're at the gym, when you're at home, whenever you can. When standing in line, you should always be doing something, you know, to improve yourself. All your jujitsu come easier. And he's like, "Yeah, I probably should. Uh, probably should do that." And I was like, "Dude, we all need to do that, yeah. no matter what the body type is." You know, I tell this to everybody. So, but you know, some people need it more than others. But yeah, totally, man. We all struggle with with ego. Of course, it's natural. But, it's know, the way it has to be. Yeah, like I tell people, you know, it, one of the common phrases in, ju- in jiu-jitsu is you know leave your ego at the door mm-hmm. tap early you know tap often kind of right. thing but as much as i say it i have to remind myself because i'll be in the middle of a roll and sometimes you know i'll tap early tap often but sometimes it's just, uh, someone has something on me it's like no nah, nah, i'm not going out like a bitch yeah, yeah exactly you know? <laughs> <laughs> that's when it comes into play you know fuck this neck crank I'm if, the, if eddie bravo's in the gym and you're rolling with a purple yeah. belt mm-hmm. you're gonna let him tap you <laughs> right. this happened this happened uh on tuesday you know i was, yeah. I was in something and i was like struggling with it and and uh at the end i was like man i probably should have tapped a little earlier to that mm-hmm. but you know i know a lot of white belts they who have uh fucked up their necks because mm-hmm. they don't tap to guillotines yeah preserve those joints guys yeah there's no benefit it's, it's not even like you look that much cooler either it's like damn he got out of it wow like you, no one's really paying that close yeah, attention you, you kind of look like an ass like if you're if you're if, you know struggling that much you know you want to win that bad just preserve your joints yeah, you'll be you right. Know. <laughs> or you always hear stories about legends who don't tap in tournaments. Mm. That always freaks me out, man. Yeah. Because I, I got my ankle popped on Sunday at Dream. Oh, you did? It's like fucking me up, yeah. Like, even today in class, I was like, ah, fuck. That's why I retired for the past three days. I was just helping you out in class, and I wasn't training. Oh, that's why. I was, I was thinking to myself, I was like, why isn't this motherfucker staying <laughs> from my class? He's, he comes from the kids' classes, but uh, he helps me out with the kids' classes, but he's not staying for my teaching. I know, man. Hope it didn't uh, hurt your ego too much. But I was in repairing my own because <laughs> the way my ego comes into play is that I train with a lot of white belts at 10th Planet mm. and I'm doing quite well against them, <laughs> as I should be, right? Yeah, like, totally. as makes sense. Like, totally. I got my blue belt a year ago and so I should be beating some guys who just started. Yeah. But then I sign up for these tournaments where the rules are not what I'm used to, mm-hmm. I'm getting caught in heel hooks and ankle locks, yeah. things that I, uh, I should be getting caught in them. My defense isn't there yet. Right. But it hurts the ego, especially because I'm, <laughs> I've been i been locked in this weird thing where I feel like I have to film every tournament mm-hmm. just because my buddies are so good at making these funny videos. Yeah, and I love them. Like as a kid, I used to make a bunch of movies. I used to go to summer camp, and stuff for that. And mm-hmm. so I just think the whole process is just fun. But the result being, uh, there's a lot of footage of me losing on the U- on YouTube now. <laughs> According to your buddy, oh Marshall, you won. Yeah. You won, Marshall. <laughs> Those are pretty funny. I yeah. would if I if I heard him if I didn't know him I didn't know you and I was overhearing him at a tournament I would hate him. That's like half the comedy for me. Yeah, is just watching him being at a tournament and people yeah. looking around and being like, "What the fuck, yeah. dude?" Yeah. <laughs> this guy. Yeah. No, but they're funny when they're all edited and stuff. And because I I know I kind of I know the joke behind it now and. I know he knows you and all mm-hmm. that. It makes it funny for me. And he doesn't train. It's yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. Because that's how it really started. My buddy Andrew would always come to these tournaments just because mm. he's a good dude. Mm. I'm like, all right, so I need you to talk shit while I'm doing this. He's like, all right. Um, and then the, the quote, his the first quote that got big on Reddit was, Marshall doing leg things. Leg <laughs> <laughs> That was the first one. Yeah. And now Giraffe Hooves has gone viral at 10th Planet. <laughs> giraffe Hooves. <Yeah. laughs> it's great. I love it. You just posted a new one today. I was watching it. Right before my class, before you came in. Nice. Yeah, new videos are out. Uh, I think this is gonna be the last one for a while, though. I can't keep doing this. I can't. I, I think I need to take a little break off uh, tournaments. 
get my defense down, get Just, my training, yeah. ego in check. Skill development, man. Skill development, get back to basics. That's a big thing in this book as well. They're talking about the uh, 49ers in the 70s, one of the worst teams in football, went to the top with this new coach because he just went down to what we call like the path to excellence. Mm -hmm. And so it's just very, very detailed, like tucking your shirt at practice. The, um, the drills go like this. Mm -hmm. And so I, I was trying to think how to, like, to apply that to jiu-jitsu. And it's kind of hard because you know I don't have like that level of experience to where I can say like, Oh, all I have to do is exactly this. Right. But, you know, it's like diet and sleep and all those things. Mm -hmm. If I'm meditating in the morning, I'll do better at practice. I'll do better at practice. I'll do better in the tournament. Stuff like that. So that's like the path to excellence. Get my health up. Yeah, I've been sick the past couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. uh, my diet went to shit. Mm -hmm. I, had, I had three weeks where I had ice cream every day. After, what? like, not having it for, like, a year. Like, I don't have, like, ice cream Jesus. that often. <laughs> but then I was going through, man. My, my obsession was... Klondike Oreo bars. Oh, I don't yeah. know if you're familiar. Dude, I, yeah, I got a little high the other day, and then I went on a uh, on an ice cream run, and I picked up a Klondike bar. I feel you. I was, man. With, I was with Adam. There it we is. were watching um, uh, EBI at his mm. house. It was in between in between matches, and we're like, dude, I want ice cream. Let's go. Ran to the to the gas station, got some Choco Tacos, some Klondike bars. You went deep. Yeah. <laughs> but for the most part, man, everything is pretty in line with me as far as, like, diet and all that goes. Because it, it, it's, it's, again, it's, it's all about promoting excellence, you know, right. in, in every area of your life. So what are some of the most important things you've done to promote excellence in your life, Matt? Um, for one, doing what I'm not doing right now, sitting up straight, <laughs> yeah. being, mindful of, being mindful of the posture. And when Huge. I look, you know... You know, just little things like looking. When I look at my phone, I don't tilt my head down. I hold it up to my face, even if I look like a weirdo. You know, taking a selfie or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, um, <clears throat> I've been lately the big one that I've been doing for myself is um, being mindful of of uh, my my sleeping periods. Mm -hmm. You know, trying to get uh, adequate amount of, of of rest. I think. All the all the guys who come before me, they say that's like one of the most things that's um, you know often overlooked is is getting getting you know getting rest. So I've been trying to do that, and then all the basic things like, and I ask this question you know to to the guys that that mentor me, and, and it all comes back to basics: drinking a ton of water throughout the day if you plan on training the next day drink water a ton the night before yeah you're here double fisting man you got a cup of tea and a bottle of water dude i have dude i'm jittery <laughs> right deep. now i'm jittery with all the caffeine that i got going on i'm super <laughs> sensitive to that stuff um, right, I, I gotta pee real quick man i'm gonna pause this okay. all right so tradition mandates that when we come back from a break um we all start singing so i'd like you to join me in a round of uh, how great is our god how great in West Philadelphia, I was born and raised <laughs> on the playground as a West band most of my days. That's not how it goes. All right. That's, that's a different up, song, though. man. Damn. Fuck, dude. We're going we to get a remix. <laughs> how great <laughs> is our God. Dude, growing up, going to like church and stuff and like having to sing some of the songs, it always <laughs> weirded me out. Even at a young age? Yeah, yeah. I don't know why. And, you know, it's not a bad thing. You know what I mean? Like I... Like I actually enjoy like doing chants, like you know, like I, I go to uh, Kundalini uh, classes and, and there's like tons of chanting and, mm -hmm. and singing and things like that. But when I was in like a church setting, it was just I don't know, I didn't like the songs. It was really weird to me growing up. So yeah. <laughs> How long did you go to church for? What what age? Did I would you stop I going? never like went consistently. Like okay. it was I would just like pop. My parents would like kind of like pop us in like every now and then, stuff like that. But I, I just what wasn't really into it. Your parents go regularly? No, no. Okay. No. <laughs> <laughs> that helps. <laughs> no, no, my mom, she goes to, like, to a non-Christian church. It's uh -huh. a Unitarian Universalist, uh -huh. which I've never quite got a good grasp on what that means. But it's kind of like a come-together-and-be-nice church. Yeah. Really simple. Yeah. And most of what they do is singing. Mm. And so I just thought about that, like, what is it about singing that, like, is, is there's something very innate about it. Yeah. Like, some people just, everyone just loves standing in a group. Mm -hmm. Standing up and mm -hmm. just singing. I think it would be something it, about it. I think it would be different now that I'm older, 
but as a young kid, I, I just didn't understand why. I didn't want to be there in the first place. Yeah, that's huge. <laughs> you know, um, a lot of this stuff was like forced upon me, like going to catechism or like you go to, to like different like uh, like Bible study groups and stuff. And I was just like, dude, I go. I already go to school. I have to go and do more school. Yeah, yeah. yeah. You know, it's like. Is catechism is that a Catholic thing? Yeah. Okay. But then I would go to Christian churches, and it was like a completely different feel. It's mm. just they would like give you homework assignments and like make you study, and I was just like, "What? <laughs> Get me out of here, mom!" <laughs> yeah, I feel you. But I've always, yeah, I, I just don't like people really telling me what to do. Ever yeah. since I was little, you know, it started at that age, so I think that has a lot to do with it. But if it's something that I seek out on my own. Dude, I'm all for it. Yeah, that's huge. You know, but if yeah. someone's telling me you gotta be here, you gotta do this, I, naturally, you know, I just want to be like, no, 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 no. That's the thing I notice a lot in people, and so in America, that translates as typically it's Christian parents telling someone to go to church, so the kid naturally looks for something else and becomes a Buddhist. That's the kind of the way mm. it tends to go. That's mm-hmm. kind of how my life went. You're into Kundalini yoga, similar shit, you know. Yeah. Looking towards Asia. But in Asia, in Taiwan, the rebellious kids are into Christianity. Oh, really? Yeah. Interesting. And so it just shows, like, there's not, it's not either religion is uh-huh. better. It's just you don't want to do what your parents told you. Right. Wow, that's yeah. interesting. Yeah, my dad, so, like, my parents weren't together growing up. So my mom would try to, like, have me do the traditional church thing. My mm-hmm. dad never, like, really forced anything um, on me. But he's, like, studied many different um, religions and just... Uh, He's you know studied uh, Buddhism, uh, Catholicism, Christianity, uh, Santeria, um, and what he kind of like took to was um, like Christian metaphysics, hmm. um, and so he just kind of like let me make up my own mind and whatever I subscribe to is what I subscribe to, and uh, I kind of have you know kind of what resonates with me is 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 the the metaphysical aspect of of things like Christian metaphysics and um but uh yeah it, having to go to a place because I was forced uh, it made me reject it altogether yeah. so I liked his approach like hey this is a little bit of information about that a little bit of information this and that that's and, a good way to do yeah, it yeah he let me just you know take my own approach whatever appealed to me that's cool man you're yeah. lucky yeah yeah you know, my, my version is that is that I started going to Catholic school in high school mm-hmm Went to modern day high school. Oh, you and did? Went to a Catholic university. And so what I got out of it is both of them had comparative religion classes. Mm. So I love that, like mm-hmm. learning about all of them. Mm-hmm. And so I have a lot of family in the South. I go mm-hmm. down there, I go to Texas. And <laughs> last time I was down there for a wedding, my uncle, my favorite uncle, he's such a great dude, he got drunk and went, you must accept Jesus into your heart. Oh. I was like, this is not the place, man. No, <laughs> like, dude, no. like one thirty in the morning, like taking no. shots. Like, <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> and so it's just interesting. Like the, the the people I know most into Christianity, um, and these are people I like. You know, they're, they're my family. They're good people. Yeah. Um, they don't know much about anything else. You know, they, yeah. anytime it comes up, like, so what? What do you mean by Buddhism? Mm. Like, what? <laughs> I don't even like to talk about it, honestly. Like, yeah. Like this, like what? what I subscribe to and um, I, I don't even like to have the conversation with people Just, I, I think it's more of like a personal thing okay and and uh, I mean not, I'm not saying like hey let's, let's stop talking about this I'm, I'm just yeah, saying cross like cross off all my questions <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I mean just like in general you know just because like talking about these things um, with, with somebody who's just like a fanatic yeah. it can get like you know pretty hairy about anything though yeah. like if you're talking to a hardcore taekwondo guy yeah like, man jujitsu is cool fuck that yeah like, whoa 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 <laughs> like <laughs> dude working at Buddha Videos so like they had um, they, they don't just you know cater to like judo players or jujitsu players or wrestlers mm. whatever they That's have what a lot known for, right? they have a lot of traditional martial arts okay. as well you know like um some, like some of the stuff that you do like the tying arts like you can using like a like a cloth uh, like a piece of um, like a scarf as a weapon huh. you know things like that uh, stuff with staff you know, uh, the like a bow staff or whatever you know um, throwing ninja stuff um, cool. so you get a bunch of a bunch of guys calling in um, for those things and yeah man I've had I don't get into arguments with them. Mm-hmm. I just kind of listen to them. But man, I've been on. I've had 
half an hour conversations. It's more of like a mm hmm, like okay, <laughs> mm -hmm, yeah, yeah kind of conversation. But they're just going off on how like jujitsu is uh, is bullshit and like it doesn't work. It's not effective, and it's it's like a you have to use a lot of muscle and you know mm. just. And I was like, man, uh huh. Mm -hmm. They don't really understand you know what you is balance leverage timing. Right. You know? Less about muscle and, and which attributes. I'm sure is what they would say about their martial art as well. Right, Balanced right, right. Technique. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. And I've heard that as well. I used to hang out at a, a Chinese tea shop in San Diego a lot, mm -hmm. and it was just like a hotbed for weird unemployed people. Mm -hmm. It was a cool place, and mm -hmm. a lot of times martial artists go in there because Chinese tea is directly linked with Chinese martial arts and Buddhism. They all the same historical founder, mm -hmm. Bodhidharma. He came mm -hmm. from India, brought Buddhism to China saw a bunch of bent back monks and taught them kung fu mm. and so <laughs> I've had many of those conversations as well like yeah you think jujitsu works man I'm like I don't know I'm a white belt fuck <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I think it's pretty cool like <laughs> yeah I'm enjoying it I'm living my life <laughs> which no, I always thought was like the best argument for anything mm -hmm. right like I don't know I like it yeah right like because yeah. at the end of the day man like and, and it kind of gets with just in jujitsu alone, like not even like besides like coming, you know, c taking all the other martial arts like in account. Just in jujitsu, like people like will divide into camps, like gi yeah. versus no gi, affiliation versus affiliation. Ten people, Planet versus everyone. Yeah, it's so weird. <laughs> like there's there's weirdos on yeah. every side. Like Ten Planet has like the weirdos that need to chill out, mm -hmm. and then you know there's like hardcore gi guys that are just like they need to chill out. Because yeah. at the end of the day, like what it comes down to is we're all human beings, and we enjoy doing this activity. And that's pretty much it. It should be Team Human rather than, you know, Team Ten Planet or, or yeah. Team Nogi. Or and very few team. people get into these systems yeah. with those extreme ideologies. Yeah. No one, like, shows up first day never knowing anything. That Carlson Gracie was the only true master. Yeah, dude. Yeah, they're super <laughs> that's hardcore. That's something that develops. Yeah. A, lot of the, a lot of the Carlson Gracie guys um, are big Ten Planet haters, you know. Yeah. But, you know. Which I love because I've been training Ten Planet for couple months now mm -hmm. I love it I think it's great mm -hmm. but the gym in San Diego that I go to is Rodrigo Maderos mm -hmm. one of Carlson Gracie's top students and so it's a direct lineage it's a great gym I recommend it to everybody mm -hmm. but I go down there and they're like you don't train in a gi man what the fuck are you doing with your life that's not real jiu <laughs> exactly it's not real yeah but just that real word submissions. real man anytime someone's thrown around the word real it always like fucks me up man like that's always like a, a pinpoint in my head where I'm just like okay this person I shouldn't argue with them about anything you know you're not going to change their mind yeah and I, <laughs> the funniest example i have that always sticks with me is we're playing bocce ball mm -hmm. not an important thing right mm -hmm. like no one's we're not turning professional we're just hung over at the beach playing bocce ball mm -hmm. in the sand and my friend he's from oregon not a coastal area of oregon and so he's saying wait bocce ball is played in grass right okay i'm gonna play as if this is grass because that's what real bocce ball is. Uh, it's real. I mean, to use a real technique. Yeah. It, but it doesn't work. You can't roll in sand. Yeah. And so it's just funny. Like that. That's why I always think of my time. Is like that's his real jujitsu. <laughs> yeah. Or it's it's like, South what Park that, fucked like, that what up. What does that even mean, man? South Park fucked that mm -hmm. up when they had a wrestling episode. Like that ain't real wrestling. <laughs> <And> the, <laughs> it's like one guy. He's like trying to teach them like amateur wrestling. Like, what? Are, what are you doing, man? What, what are you doing? Yeah. He's just gro groping these guys. I have a hard time saying that I that I train or, or teach jujitsu because to me, man, like a lot of the moves that I that I teach, it's all a blend, man. It's all a blend of uh, of styles. Like I I teach things that come from from wrestling. I've, Sambo, I take things from judo, jujitsu, you know, et cetera, et cetera. It's all kind of, so I just kind of say, you know, I teach grappling. You right. Know? Uh, I, I'm into martial arts. You know, I have a hard time kind of hashtagging just jujitsu right. without <laughs> leaving all the other hashtags out as well. That's a good you way know? to do it. The, blind, the, 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 the lines have become blurred, you know. Yeah. There's so much cross training going on, you know, nowadays. As there should be, man. People kind of take this, you know, too serious. They're going to give themselves premature heart attacks stressing that stressing out about this stuff it's natural selection let them do it yeah. <laughs> <laughs> let it happen can't stop that we're not gonna stop that with a just, podcast just love each other guys. <laughs> just love just love so did you wrestle before in high I, school or anything yeah i wrestled in high school okay um i started training in in eighth grade um but it was like at like a uh, like an mma gym so i kind of started like training everything at once mm. striking and groundwork cool but uh, 
the the ground game wasn't like you know developed um the guy who like opened the gym it was like a small little neighborhood gym mm -hmm. he taught me a lot of good things he was a good instructor but um you know the technique wasn't you know it wasn't high level you right. know it was like early 2000s he was like a blue belt <coughs> right. um and uh the 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 jujitsu was so if you snatch up a guillotine you don't go to your back and take the guillotine. You walk them up, you stand them up, and you put their back against the cage, and you finish the standing guillotine and, and knee them in the stomach and the face kind of thing. You know, that's the kind of groundwork it Savage. was. Savage. So being at Ten Planet, um, it's like it's a completely different world. It's so complex, mm -hmm. you know. And all the other jiu-jitsu stuff, it's so complex. That's a different style than what I started with. But, yeah, I started in eighth grade and then um, did that through ninth grade and then... Uh, I wrestled starting my, my sophomore year. I didn't want to wrestle freshman year because I saw how hard the wrestlers worked, and I was like, oh, my God, this is intense. But then I, I sacked up, and I did it sophomore year, and it's the best thing I ever did. Yeah, I joined the wrestling team. Uh, surprisingly, I was very skinny back then, mm -hmm. and they kept telling me, like, man, you're going to get so buff here. Get so <laughs> <laughs> it never happened. I I'm still skinny. What, what happened, bro? <laughs> I worked hard, man. Yeah. I said I was the hardest working guy on the wrestling team. I don't know if that was true. Mm -hmm. I lost all the time, man. Mm -hmm. I lost all the time. Which is why I don't trip out about like losing anymore because it's mm -hmm. like, yeah, that's what I'm supposed to do. So. Yeah. <laughs> you, did, you did it enough times you're used to it, yeah. Yeah. Like, I never, I n not once did I think I was going to win a wrestling match. Wrestling is one of those things that, you know, it makes you tough. For sure. It, it, it shows you what, what uh, hard work is, you know. Like, I trained, you know, beforehand and I thought it was hard training, and, dude. Wrestling. High school wrestling is like the hardest thing I've ever done till this date. You know, I've I've been on many different teams and had many different coaches and been in many different gyms and dude, nothing compares to high school wrestling. As lame as that sounds, man. I believe it, man. I was there. I did it three years. Yeah. Quit my senior year because I, I discovered um, girls. I did just one, just one girl. Okay. No, no, no. Sound like I'm bragging. <laughs> Finally got one girl. You when caught I was her. Eighteen. <laughs> And so that, that's what got me out of it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, man, wrestling's hard. Dude. I remember our CIF training. We had to run two miles, then we wrestled for 30 Ooh. minutes. Uh -huh. Which, if you've never wrestled before, like, it's much harder. Like, the actual matches are much more physically intense than, say, jujitsu. Mm -hmm. Jujitsu, there's Let's much go. more opportunity to chill. Wrestling, you don't have the opportunity. There's no chilling time. And so we do that, and then we would carry people upstairs. Mm -hmm running up and down stairs and my partner the only person my size was not in CIF so I had to do both times everyone else was switching I did both and I still have chicken legs like what the fuck man I ran so many stairs <laughs> <laughs> yeah dude. I don't understand how muscles have work yeah me neither I never got never got jacked no probably I, I didn't spend as I kind of slacked off in the weight room yeah but dude yeah they would make you like train in the morning then You'd have to wrestle, you have to do all your conditioning, and then have you run anywhere from two to nine miles. Then you go and do your, uh, your strength and conditioning, you hit the weight room, and then you go and, and do your, your live drills, your technique and stuff. So you, just, you have like four sessions in one day. Madness. And then you gotta go home and do homework. Yeah. <laughs> and you remember you're in school. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Brutal, man. All right, let's look at my questions, see if I can any tough ones. You have an upcoming trip, you're going north. What's up with that, man? You're driving. You just, do you want a dog? Is that true? Me, my dog, in one car, and then uh, my best friend growing up, Michael. Um, he's going to take his own car. He's going to go for a couple months. I'm, gonna, I'm aiming for a month, but I really, I'm just going until I run out of cash. Good way um, to do it. So we're going to go up the coast, just kind of take our time, um, stop, stop at you know, wherever we feel like along the way, and uh, make our way up to Canada, and then just kind of take it from there. You've been on this path before? Um, as going up the coast? Have yeah. I been? Um, yeah, I've gone up all the way to, um, what is it called? Lost Coast. Lost is Coast is, is probably like two hours south of Oregon. Okay. And Lost Coast is probably like 27 miles of just desolate beach. No one around, just black sand all you see is driftwood you have the pacific ocean on one side you turn around you got dense redwood forest mm. to your other side wow. you know it's uh it's 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 like kind of like big sur but without the people mm. you know okay 
yeah, it's it's a really unique place. Man, I've been uh, Big Sur is a place that like enters my dreams every once in a while. Like mm-hmm. I gotta fucking go there. Yeah. But I tried and it's sold out, which doesn't make sense to me. It's like a national, like it's a a wild place. It's nature. And yeah. It's sold like. <laughs> yeah. That, that, there's something weird about that. That's you always can't, confusing can't to me too. That's always confusing to me too. I mean, I understand why you know, you you pay the the national park so they can have the rangers and the rangers you know keep the maintenance going with all those places whatever 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 um keep it clean but but yeah at the end of the day it's it's land and it's it's like why why can't i go there you know can't just show up nope. i can't i can't take my dog there what <laughs> <laughs> yeah so i'm i'm uh i don't know what places along the way i can can't take my dog Oh, I'm just yeah. gonna kind of see if I can't uh, sleep there overnight. I'll just go to like a rest area, crash in my car, and then during the day explore the places, and then you know, whatever. Free spirit. Yeah, we'll kind of we'll just kind of see along the way. I, I I looked up the restrictions on bringing my dog into Canada, mm. and I guess if you go through um, not Vancouver, um, I forget. I forget what uh, what area, what border through Canada you go through. If they have a um, a pit bull law where if you they have a visual inspection, if you bring a, if you bring your dog and the, and visitors are not exempt from this. If you bring your dog and it's a pit bull type, then the the animal um, service or the the like the border patrol agents whatever um, they can take your dog. And euthanize it, and Whoa. no one's exempt from this. And I re- and I read exclusively pit bulls or old it, dogs. Yeah, 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 pit bulls. Oh, yeah. You have to be able to, sh- to show documentation that it's not a pit bull. Huh. Um, and I read that in a uh, in a blog. And it was like the first uh, first option that Google pulled up, and I was just like, "Is this is this for real? Like, is this a real thing? Like, I can't just turn around." And be like, okay, I won't come into Canada. Yeah. Don't kill my dog. <laughs> like they you know. shoot it in the face on the spot. Yeah, I've done, z- <laughs> I've done zero research on that. See if that's you know actually a thing. But if that's true, man, that's pretty wild. Yeah, that's strange. No, no, no like you, can't, what you, happened, can't, you like... can't turn around. I'm taking your dog, buddy. Have yeah. <laughs> I know Canada has some weird laws like that. Like you can't go to Canada if you have a DUI. Stuff like that. Yeah. Which. Luckily, I don't have a DUI yet. But the day is still young, Matt. <laughs> it's like, what, three, four you're o'clock? Trying to, you're trying to party tonight or what? <laughs> trying to drunk drive some Uber, make some cash, party while I'm doing it. <laughs> the Uber, yeah. Yeah, man. It's a fun way to live. So, we've been going a while. Um, I don't know if there's anything more to talk about. Water is done. Tea is winding down. Anything we want to leave the people with, Matt? Live, love, laugh. Live, love, laugh, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, on that note, thanks for listening, guys. <laughs> <laughs>